171. Standard. Octave and bread Yeah, 171. The board shift. The curve you've got is the percent saturation of hemoglobin. Yes. Okay. In other words, how loaded the hemoglobin is with oxygen. More loaded, less loaded. Yep. And then along the bottom, we have the partial pressure of oxygen, right? Yes. Okay. So it's how much, you can just say oxygen concentration. You wanted to do it in just, you know sort of rough terms. So obviously if there's very little oxygen available, the hemoglobin can't be loaded, right? Yep. And the curve that results is one that looks like this. Yeah. Okay? So that's the standard curve. Now, the Bohr shift talks about two things. One is pH or acidity, and the other one is temperature. And we can look at both of those individually, but they have common denominators, okay? So if, if you take the hemoglobin, or you put the hemoglobin in the blood, in a situation of increasing uh, acid situation, and this is due to carbon dioxide, so let me do that over here. Oh, because like in the muscle there's more carbon dioxide? Yeah, I mean the muscles are working hard, so they're giving off carbon dioxide. And exactly, the carbon dioxide gets together with with the water to produce carbonic acid. Okay, so CO2 plus H2O produces carbonic acid. Now let me do it right. H2CO3, which splits into hydrogen ions plus bicarbonate ions. And this is the acid piece, and this is the carbon dioxide piece. So you can look at this from either point of view. The one that they do in your book is say um, the carbon dioxide partial pressure or the concentration, I mean it's a partial pressure in this case, it's how much, they've got it in kilopascals, which is a pressure unit, but it just means a lot of carbon dioxide or less carbon dioxide. And if you have a lot of carbon dioxide, which also creates the, the acid situation, this curve shifts to the right. Why? Okay. <coughs> All right. Actually, it's drawn that badly. It still comes up to the top. Like that. Shifts more to the right. Now, why? Okay. So the way to understand this is what does the hemoglobin do in any situation? And the way to understand it is to say, okay, let's draw a line down it. Okay? At some level of carbon dioxide, um, so as we increase the amount of carbon dioxide available in the situation, what does the hemoglobin do? Right, we're going from here, from that point, down to this point. And if you take those across, you have a decrease in saturation. Do you agree? Yes. Okay. So that means as you increase the carbon dioxide around the hemoglobin, around the red blood cells, they tend to unload. Now, the thing you got to understand is, does that make sense? Yeah. Where are you going to have a lot of carbon dioxide in the blood? In the muscles. What do you want the hemoglobin to do in the muscles? Unload. It's oxygen because the muscles need the oxygen. So in the muscles, we have more carbon dioxide, and so with this whole board system, um, more acidic, will be will unload and so then it can get the oxygen to the muscle. So is the 
or decreasing pH, that um, hemoglobin will unload? Oh. Yeah. It unloads more than it would normally. Okay. Okay, and if you think about when would that happen in the muscles? When you're exercising, right? If you're exercising, then your muscles are going to produce more carbon dioxide. And if your muscles are exercising, what's their demand for oxygen? Higher. Higher. So what do you want the hemoglobin to do? Unload. Well, it's got to make sense, right? So the hemoglobin will do what it's supposed to do in that situation. Okay. Okay? So the borship is related to like exercising muscles? Yes. Okay. Okay? And you can look at exactly the same situation from a temperature point of view. Okay. When your when your uh, muscles are exercising, what happens to their temperature? It increases. They get warmer. So if you make the hemoglobin warmer, it shifts it to the right as well. Same thing happens. Okay. Okay? So the hemoglobin tends to unload in warmer situations. Okay. So far so good? Yeah. yeah. Okay? Now, then you can say, okay. But then the other thing you can look at is just the curve itself. Like, never mind the bore shift to the right, of the, you know, shifting it to the right or the left. Just look at the shape of the curve. You know, if we are in a situation of high oxygen concentration, what does the hemoglobin do? It loads up. Where would you find that in your body? In the lungs. If you get into an area of low oxygen saturation, what does the hemoglobin do? Unloads. And where would that be in your body? In the muscles. So the shape of the curve itself is adapted to its job, right? Where there's lots of oxygen, it loads up. Where there's very little oxygen, it unloads, which is exactly what you want it to do. Okay? And then the other curves, while we're on this topic, we can throw the other curves in as well, which is if we compare, uh, let me just do this thing again. Yeah, we, we throw in fetal hemoglobin or lamma hemoglobin or myoglobin. Okay, so there's our normal adult curve. Then the fetal curve is on this side. Okay, so now I think, okay. At any particular point, it's always a good idea to draw a line up and down. You say, okay, at any particular point, whose blood is this line? That would be the? I don't know. Uh, the mother. Uh, okay. Right? <laughs> and if this what? is the fetal hemoglobin, we're talking the baby that's growing inside her, right? No. Uh -huh. Okay? So at any particular point, you know, let's say we're in the middle here, this is the placenta or someplace, at any particular point, what does the mother's hemoglobin do and what does the baby's hemoglobin do? Mother's unloads and hemoglobin. Exactly. And so what? It gives it, the mother gives her oxygen to the baby. And what do you want to happen? Exactly that, right? I mean, you don't want the mom's hemoglobin to say, no, baby can't have it. <laughs> Poor baby's going to die, <laughs> right? You want the mother's hemoglobin to give its oxygen to the baby's hemoglobin. Otherwise, the baby's in trouble. So at any point along the curve, it doesn't matter where you are, the mother's is always lower than the baby's. So the mom will unload as the baby is loading. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Okay? 